Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcar.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and we're just producing this quick follow-up video for the Nano VNA that we uh, had released a few days ago. Uh, a lot of popularity on that uh, unit, and we had uh, some follow-up questions. So we just want to cover those. want to show how to do a calibration for this unit, how you can also do a touchscreen calibration for the unit, and also how to put it into the uh, simple single trace mode and show SWR on the unit. So uh, should be real short, uh, three little segments here. So let's go ahead and turn the unit on. And it comes up in its sort of default configuration, 50 to 900 megahertz, and showing both traces. Trace uh, zero is in log mag, and uh, trace one is showing the Smith chart. And so the first thing that I typically like to do is go ahead and get rid of uh, the second trace, that blue trace showing the Smith chart. And so we can uh, simply go in here and click on the screen to activate the touch screen, go under display. Go under trace and then click on the blue trace, trace one, and just click off. And that kind of declutters the screen a little bit. Now, anytime you want to have that Smith chart up there and use that, uh, obviously you can leave that on. You could turn off trace uh, zero and, and simply just have the, the Smith chart. But since we're going to be going into uh, SWR mode, we can uh, turn that off for now at least. And then we can come in here. And again, we're, we're showing... Uh, for the trace, it's in log mag. Uh, if we want to switch over to SWR, it's really fairly simple. Uh, again, just click on the screen and bring up the menu system again. And again, you can do this with this jog wheel here at the top as well. And I'm just going to go back sort of to the home page of the, uh, the menu here. And um, in fact, let's go all the way back to the, the home page. So here we are on the home page. So when you come back in here, go back under display and then just hit format, right? We already turned off trace uh, one. We're down to trace zero, the yellow one. Now we go under format, and just down here we have SWR. So we can come in here, hit SWR, and now we've switched it over to SWR mode. And um, I have a cable connected. I don't have anything on the cable right now. But I do have a, a new little uh, Slim Jim roll-up type, type antenna. Let's go ahead and uh, and get that connected and just uh, just briefly jiggle things around here just a little bit. We'll get things reset in just a moment and uh, we'll check this new antenna since we just put the unit into SWR mode. It's a very nice, very thin little uh, antenna unit. All right, make sure we're on our stand here a little bit. And so what we want to do here in this case is we want to uh, change the uh, the beginning and the end of the range. So again, we can come in here, go back, basically here to the uh, sorry, kind of the home page of the menu system. Go under stimulus, go to that start. And uh, again, in here, if you just touch down here, you bring up the input field. Uh, let's check from 130 and then hit the uh, megahertz so you don't have to put in so many zeros. And then come in here and hit the stop. Just tap at the bottom to bring up the input. Let's go to 160 and then M for megahertz. And so now we've got the SWR range. Uh, on this antenna that's connected from, let me uh, see if I can bring that into the frame. And we got a little antenna connected to it. And we've, uh, we've got that from 130 to 160. And you can see uh, it's a pretty good antenna. Uh, let's move the cursor. Let's bring the unit back over here a little bit. 
Shifts around on us a little bit there, but let's bring that cursor back over towards the bottom of the range there. Uh, 1.02 at uh, 143 point uh, what eight megahertz, so uh, pretty good. It's uh, it's tested pretty good. Uh, it's tested pretty good also at 440. So uh, quick quick uh, way to get in there and turn off one of the traces and get it onto uh, SWR mode. So again, when you want to go to SWR, you just come in here. Let's go back to the home page, and you simply go under display and then format and you can turn on the smith chart turn on swr whichever log mag whichever of those settings you would want so that's how we get into swr mode and uh, we can do a check on an antenna whether it's a rubber ducky antenna uh, an hf antenna uh, this is a two meter 70 centimeter little slim jim antenna so we'll uh, stop this segment we'll bring you back in just a moment and we'll show how to do a calibration on the unit and in the final segment, we'll show how to do a calibration on for the touchscreen of the unit. All right, folks, we're back with uh, another segment here on this addendum to the Nano VNA. And in this segment, uh, we're just going to show how you can do a calibration of the unit. Uh, we've got a cable connected over here. Uh, this is a, a, another cable that I had. Uh, I've used the cables that come with this particular unit that had this accessory kit. And on this cable, I've got the... Uh, the female to female converter so that I can connect these uh, testing standards over here on the left hand side. You've got the uh, the open, the short, and the 50 ohm load and then we can do a through. So to do a calibration I've just rebooted the unit it's back in its default mode 50 to 900 megahertz. So to do a calibration we uh, we touch on the screen bring up the touch screen and it's got that calibration uh, second from the bottom down there touch calibration and touch calibrate at the top and there it's got the uh, sort of the sequence you're going to go through open short the load and then you can do a through now for general and simple antenna testing you know uh, again there's massive <laughs> ongoing discussions on the, the the setup of this little unit again it's not a five figure you know ten fifteen twenty thousand uh, dollar you know scientific test unit but it does a lot of good work, and uh, I think it, a simple calibration will certainly help it. But whatever uh, cable, like we have here on the left, whatever cable you're going to use, uh, if you're going to use one of the default cables, or you know, I've got this little uh, extra cable I had ordered, uh, and that uh, little little female to female to connector, put those on your unit, and then you know attach your your testing standards over here to the, to those cables, so you will get the best results. So. Uh, we've got it set up here. Let's go ahead and put uh, the open on there. I'm going to grab these uh, these testing standards. We'll just put uh, put these on. Let's make sure we grab the open, and uh, we'll try to put these on here without mangling things. We'll jiggle things just a little bit. Bear with us here for just a minute. We'll put this open on, and once you've got the open on. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just come up here and you click open. It's very fast. You see it moved down to the short. So we'll take the open off. And jiggle things around here just a little bit, but hopefully not too much. And then so we're going to take the short, put it on. And uh, some people recommend that you uh, you do a calibration every time you use the unit, but you can save these out. So I've got the short on there. We'll click short, and you see it highlights what you've gone through. Now it's ready for the load. Uh, again, it, it, it depends on how meticulous you want to be. I think for general antenna testing like a lot of ham radio operators are going to do, I'm not sure it's that critical. If you've done a calibration uh, recently using all the same equipment, you're probably fine. Now, if you're going to get in and use this unit to test some other things, which you can do, uh, it's a pretty full-featured product. We're not trying to show everything with these videos. Let's try to straighten it up a little bit there. And so we have our 50-ohm lobe on there, and we just click Load. Um, now, I'm not going to do an isolation, but we can do a through. All we have to do is just take off the the 50 ohm load and we can do the through and we're pretty much done okay folks and for our final uh, test here 
I went ahead and off camera connected the, uh, the cable to both of the connectors S11 and S21. And here under the calibrate menu, we're simply now going to click through and capture that through setting. So that's pretty much it for calibrating the unit. Uh, what we'll do is we'll end this segment. We'll bring you folks right back and we'll connect our USB-C cable to the computer and we'll show you how you can initiate a touchscreen calibration for the unit itself using Hyper Terminal on Windows. Very simple little procedure as long as you know a couple of commands and that's easy enough to find those. So we'll end this segment and we'll bring you folks right back. All right, folks, we're going to bring you back here for this final segment. And I just want to cover uh, briefly how you can uh, connect your Nano VNA to your computer with that USB-C connection. So I've got a USB-C cable connected. It's not the one that shipped with the unit. It's just a longer one connected to my little netbook here in my, uh, in my little desk lab setup. And we're going to run Hyper Terminal in Windows and connect to the Nano VNA and be able to run some commands. Now, there's, there's a document that covers quite a few commands. I can't strongly recommend enough. Uh, if you've got a Nano VNA, folks, join the groups.io forum. A lot of activity happening there, uh, firmware development, PC software development, and access to resources like uh, this document I'm about to show you. Um, and it's free. It's not a, a paid thing. But it's a great set of references and information and folks that have these units, If you have, especially if you have advanced questions. So we've got our USB cable connected here. Let's just see if we can pan up to the monitor. And we'll zoom in a little bit. I just want to show that uh, the document there on the right, you can see, and, and there's quite a few uh, command line references in it. But you can see there's that one called touch cal, and there's also a touch test. If you want to do a test after you've calibrated. Uh, and this document references a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and again, this is available free on the on the groups.io forum. So just go uh, sign up over there and uh, have access, again, not only to all the folks in the development, but documents like this. <clears throat> so I've got Hyperterminal open. And I've, I've just got to save. So let's open. We've got COM10 on this little uh, netbook I've got when I connect the USB cable. The, the Nano VNA seems to come up under COM10. You could always open up. Uh, on Windows, uh, go under System. If I right click on the Start and I go under Device Manager, we'll just bring that up real fast. Bring that down in here so we can see. Bring up Device Manager and you can look uh, under your ports, COM ports. You can see that COM10 came in. Now that's that's what comes in on this particular system, but whatever system you have, you just go in here and look it up so you'll know what COM port to use. So I've already had that saved. So I've got COM10 put in there, and I've got uh, the serial speed at 115.200. Um, for these simple things, you don't really need a super high speed. You could probably do 9600 or, or just whatever you want to use there. But let's go ahead and open that up. We'll bring that down into frame. So you can see there, the, uh, the shell is open. We have a command prompt, and we can run the, those commands. So we could run touch cow. And when you run touch cal, it'll bring up the calibration points on the unit. All right, so we went ahead, we typed in touch cal. We're just going to hit enter. And when you do that, let's go ahead and come back out a little bit. And let's uh, see if we can come back down to the nano VNA itself. See, we're still connected. back over there and hopefully you can see uh, there in the upper right hand corner so if you can see here in the upper right hand corner it's got and let me uh, lean that out just a little bit further all right so it's got the calibration touch point ready to go for you so take your finger or your uh, stylus see if we can get it touched in that corner there And then you'll see it brings up a second calibration touch point here in the bottom corner. And we can just touch on that one to calibrate. And then you've got your calibration points. And so when we come back up to the software, we have a hyper terminal still open. It'll show you the coordinates to those, those calibration points you just set.
We'll get that back in frame. So you can see it picked up the calibration touch points there. So uh, the document here, again, freely available on the groups.io forum. Uh, it's got all kinds of things that people have figured out about the unit and all kinds of commands, but that's how you can do a, a touchscreen calibration on this unit. Pretty simple. So we've shown you how to do a touchscreen calibration. We've shown you how to do the calibration with the standards that ship with the unit and also how to put it simply into a single trace SWR mode. So that'll finish it up for this addendum for the Nano VNA. Again, if there's a uh, interest in seeing the PC software, we can show that as well. Let us know in the comments below, but that'll wrap it up for this addendum on the Nano VNA. So this is Chris, KY4CKP73.